Can you hear me now? Ah, there we go. We've got sound. All right, Trace. Hi, everybody. <laughs> I'm Joe Doolin. I'm the Director of Advancement for Pause with Cause. This is Trace. I don't know, if, did my PowerPoint make it to, uh, to everybody? Oh, still, well, that's okay. Don't, don't worry about it, because we can, we can go on with that. But I thought, you know, the perfect icebreaker for the beginning of a speech is to bring a puppy with you. Because <laughs> Trace is, uh, I guess, about 13 and a half weeks old. And he's one of our Paul's puppies. I'm going to put him down here. Okay. Here we go. <laughs> Come on over. There we go. Um, if all goes well, Trace, who is right now being raised by one of our foster puppy families, uh, at about 15 months of age, will come back to Paws and at that point begin training. And at that point, he... Uh, oh, thank you. Great. So there you go, bring out a, a cute puppy. <laughs> so Trace, as everything goes well, um, he'll be trained to be an assistance dog. He'll be a service dog for someone like Bob, who's in a wheelchair and will do a variety of tasks, uh, from opening doors, turning on light switches, um, retrieving things as little, as small as a dime, to... Um, even for some people, being able to brace. So if a person needs help in getting up, the dog can actually brace and allow the person to use the dog to get up, to balance. So uh, a variety of tasks that that service dog can do. Or Trace may become a seizure response dog. And a seizure response dog can respond to uh, the client's seizure, uh, provide comfort, get help, get a phone, pull an alarm, uh, and provide stimulation during a seizure uh, to help that person. Or a combination dog, or a service dog for children with autism, which is a new program I'll talk a little bit more about in a, in a couple of minutes. Um, or a hearing dog. And a hearing dog is actually uh, how Paws with the Cause started uh, about 33 years ago. So it's a great story. We have a lot of great stories of Paws with the Cause. But Mike Sapp is the CEO and the founder of Paws with the Cause. And, and 30 some years back, he was driving a truck, uh, doing deliveries. And uh, he, he got into a conversation with a man at one of his regular stops. And uh, Marty Jansen was deaf, he and his wife both deaf. And they were just adopting a three-year-old deaf child. And Marty was concerned because as both parents being deaf, they were, they were afraid. What happens when our child cries at middle of the night? How do we know? Um, and he had heard about hearing dogs. So he asked Mike, who raised dogs and trained dogs, he said, do you think you could train our dog, Crystal? And Mike said, well, I, I, I train dogs for, for not for people with disabilities, for other reasons, but I'll give it a try, no guarantees. And so he started to train Crystal. He would go over to their home at nights and work with the dog and work with um, the couple. And sure enough, Crystal learned a variety of tasks, you know, responding to noises like um, a fire, a smoke alarm, or a, a doorbell, or the telephone, or a child's cry. Um, and one night, Mike walked in for, um, for a, uh, a training session and there were um, several people in the living room. And Mike said, I I'm sorry, I, I, maybe I had something scheduled wrong, but I thought tonight was a training session. And uh, the Jensen said, well, no, actually, Mike, you don't understand. These people, they're all deaf and they all want a dog. <laughs> and, and that's how Paul started. Um, you know, he had no intentions of a nonprofit organization, of clients uh, throughout the country, uh, but that's what it's become. 
and, uh, and Mike started this journey that 33 years later we have over 2,500 assistance dogs placed throughout the country. We have uh, current client dog teams in 41 states. We have 46 employees. Our headquarters are in uh, Wayland, Michigan, and over 65,000 square feet of building space. Uh, an operating budget that's approaching $4 million, an annual operating budget every year. So um, it's quite a story. Um, we have remarkable stories at PAWS about these incredible dogs and what they do with, for people with disabilities and helping them um, find greater independence. And that's what our mission is, is to help people with disabilities uh, find greater independence. Uh, Bob Kosminski is, um, is a longtime client. And, um, and I thought he was the perfect client to come and talk to this group because Bob works at Grand Valley State University's library system and um, his dog Wyatt is here. So I'd like to turn it over to Bob and let him talk a little bit about, about his uh, story. And I think we've got a, we can get you hooked up with the mic. Thank you, Joe. Hope on, this is on. Trace. Can everyone hear me okay? Come on, Trace. Come, come. First of all, I want to say good afternoon. I, I got Happy it. Veterans Day. I know today is an observance of our veterans. Um, we're very blessed to have had many men and women serve and still serving to protect our country and and so we can enjoy our freedoms um, one of my freedoms is independence um, I always try to tell people that every day is Independence Day with a service dog especially from Paws with a Cause I I found out about this organization probably seven years after my paralysis I'll tell you what happened to me I, I haven't always been in a wheelchair back in 1983 when I was just 25 years old Somehow a virus attacked my spinal cord and left me paralyzed from the waist down. I was born and raised here in Grand Rapids. I attended Grand Rapids Central High School, which is just up on Fountain. I also graduated from Grand Rapids Junior College, which is now Community College. So I'm um, a long time resident here at Grand, Rap in Grand Rapids, but I wanted to share with you my story and what service dogs mean to me. Wyatt is my fourth service dog. Uh, you, never re you never call them replacements because they're so unique. Each one, just like people, they're, they're so unique. They may be trained to do some of the same tasks, but uh, they're, they're very much unique. Uh, my prior service dogs, the first one was a golden retriever named Tuffy. She served my needs for 12 years. The second one, his name was Phantom, another big uh, male golden retriever. He served my needs for just as long. He lived to be 14 and a half. Weaver, my third service dog, is still with me. Uh, he'll be 13 uh, January 1st and is still doing well. I actually tell people I'm an equal opportunity employer because I rotate between Wyatt and Weaver every other day. So as long as Weaver's health is doing well, I'm going to continue using him. But I wanted to bring Weaver, um, I want to bring Wyatt today with, with me because Wyatt um, is my future. He, he is, um, he's just four years old. He's been trained to help pull my wheelchair by me holding on to this specially designed uh, backpack. He only wears the backpack in public, uh, which uh, for the reason that it identifies him as an assistance dog. The specially designed harness allows him to pull me by holding onto this strap, it's a controlled pull. It's not uh, anywhere near uh, a speed or a uh, race to get to where we're going because it has to be very controlled and safe for me to, to, uh, to get to my destination. These dogs are highly trained. It takes six months to a year to train them to do what they can do. And I just wanna tell you that the, the independence that they bring people with disabilities is amazing. Not to mention the hidden uh, benefits of uh, having people come up to me and more apt to talk to me where it actually, the dog becomes the, uh, let's just say, it, it, break, it breaks the ice between the disability and the, and the person that's able-bodied. They're more apt to come up and say, hi, how are you? Boy, that's a beautiful dog. What does your dog do for you? And I'll tell you, it's, it's, that's one of the hidden benefits. Um, these animals are so well trained. Uh, PAWS is just one of many organizations around the country that trains dogs, but um, we're blessed to have an organization like this right here in our backyard. I didn't even know about PAWS with the Cause until 1990 when 
Mike Sapp, the founder of Paws, came and did a United Way presentation at my uh, previous employer, which was Spartan Stores. I worked in the corporate office for 12 years as a customer service representative and actually went seven years uh, without a service dog until that day. And I saw Mike do a demonstration with his demo dog named Dusty. It was a beautiful goal and I thought, boy, that's kind of neat. That dog can, that dog could possibly, or a dog could possibly help me. But human pride stood in a way, so I actually didn't even get involved right away until the following year when we had uh, the United Way presentation take place again at, at Spartan Stores, and this time I brought my wife with me and went up and talked to Mike afterwards and said, Mike, how can I get involved? I, I'd, I'd like to, first of all, uh, thank Mike for all his uh, vision, as well as his late wife, Candy. They had the vision to know that dogs can make a difference in people's lives. They can do things that people don't even understand possible. Uh, like I said, being able to do things for us physically, also for us mentally, uh, they literally bring a lot to our life. They truly enhance our lives. I wanted to show you some of the things Wyatt can do real quick before our time runs out. Uh, Wyatt is trained to pick up numerous items, items as small as a dime or as thin as a credit card. Things generally when they fall, they don't stay in one place, they'll go underneath the table or chair. So. Um, especially if something fell off this uh, stage here, I wouldn't be able to get it. I'd have to ask one of you to get it for me. But with a service dog by my, si by my side, that increases my level of independence. It, it, it gives me the independence that, uh, that I need to live a daily life. And I, I truly believe that um, having a service dog for these many years, which has been 22 now, they literally, literally have given me greater uh, independence and, and a greater opportunity to be as active as I am now. Um, like I said, I, Joe mentioned I, worked at Grand, I work at Grand Valley State University. I work in the Zumberg Library in the Allendale campus, and uh, both Weaver and Wyatt, my prior two service dogs, were very well known. And they, they know um, the students, it's a wonderful experience for them too to see uh, these dogs do things. I mean, they can't always be doing something every minute of the day, but they are trained to do things. They're, they're reliable, they're dependable, and they're the best friend you can ever ask for in life. So uh, with that said, I'm gonna show you some of the things Wyatt's been trained to do. I can drop something and he will pick it up for me. Like, we'll see if he'll go off the stage to get this. Hey, Wyatt. Wyatt, take it. These are my keys. Hey, Wyatt, take it over there. He's looking for him. Smell, Wyatt. Good boy. Wyatt, take it. See if you can see him. Oh, if you can see him. Over there, Wyatt. Over there. Wyatt. He's gonna get his leash first. <laughs> Wyatt, break. Good boy. He's trying to get, get uh, my leash if I drop it. Hey, Wyatt. Wyatt, take it. Bring. Good boy, bring. Yes, bring. Good boy. Hold. He's got both the leash and the keys. <laughs> yep. He's a multitasker. <laughs> Wyatt, Wyatt's a multitasker. Uh, so typically a dog does not like to feel the metal in their mouth, but they're so well trained, these dogs, you ask them to do something and they'll do it for you. The reliability is unbelievable. Um, I mean, that's what you need in a service dog. A service dog can't be submissive, they can't be aggressive, they have to meet very strict requirements to get to this level. Uh, we wish that every dog could make the program, but unfortunately, they have to have the right. They have to have the right qualities. Another thing he's trained to do. He can pick up something as small as a dime. I don't know if you'll be able to see this off the stage. But what he'll do is either use his tongue or his his teeth to pick it up and hold it in his mouth. He knows what we're gonna do, don't you? <laughs> Might take it. So he has it. Hold. And I ask him for it. And there it is. I just wanted to thank Grand Rapids Public Library for inviting us here today to share what service dogs mean to people with disabilities. They are worth their weight in gold. They give us the independence and enhance our life. Uh, the things that we used to be able to do, we took for granted. Being able to pick things up, I uh, risked the chance of falling out of my chair because of a spasticity, the involuntary leg spasm, which do go, come along with a spinal cord injury, but 
With that said, having a dog being able to pick things up for me um, saves me the risk of falling out of the chair. Not to mention, I, I, er, I mentioned earlier about a dog being able to help pull the wheelchair, a control pull. As winter is coming soon, uh, one of the things they are really helpful in doing is getting through the snow and ice. Um, I tell people I have four paw drive by my side. <laughs> but uh, I wanted to say thank you again to the Grand Rapids Public Library for inviting us. And, um, and I hope I can at least leave one thing with you today and let you know that uh, these animals mean a lot to us. They help us every day. Thank you. We'll keep you right up here, Bob. Um, like I said, we have so many great stories that pause with a cause. And, and um, along with Bob's story, I thought I'd also talk a little bit about the Taylors. I was, I was able to spend an afternoon, a Saturday afternoon, a couple weeks ago with the Taylors um, in uh, Gross Point, Michigan. Uh, they are a current client in a new program, a fairly new program, a SDA, or a social a service dog for children with autism. Uh, some amazing research is being done on uh, how dogs can benefit a child who has been diagnosed on the um, spectrum of autism. And um, so the Taylors are this, this great family. In fact, uh, both the parents work in special ed. And their son, Elliot, who's seven years old, has um, been diagnosed with autism. Um, and, and I'd just like to read a couple of things that uh, Daniel uh, talks about with autism. He says that uh, bedtime in our house is a constant struggle. Um, and that's true for people who have kids. But when you know that you have a child who's autistic, there's some special uh, circumstances involved. Uh, Daniel says, we would have to hold Elliot to help his body shut down at night. Elliot would wake up at the slightest noise and then Doreen or I would have to go lay down with him to get him to go back to sleep. And, and those frequent restless nights, sleepless nights, fed into difficult mornings, which fed into tantrums uh, that autistic children can experience. And it was a constant struggle, as he says. Um, so the Taylors looked into an SDA dog, and they, they became one of our families in the pilot program. And um, it, it, it's just going spectacular. And um, uh, I, I think a, an email that Daniel sent us um, is, is really tells you the heart and soul of, of what an assistance dog can do. Um, he shares, he says, it seems ironic to say that a two-year-old lab is bringing calm to a home. But it truly is. Um, Lewis, his dog, models the happiness and calmness that we want in our lives. Uh, it's very hard to put into words the relationship that forms between Elliot and Lewis. Elliot willingly goes to bed now with Lewis, who models Elliot how to relax. Lewis knows that at the end of the day, when it's dark outside and playtime or work time and every other time is done, we should be laying down to rest. Lewis sleeps in the bed right next to Elliot, and now he pets Lewis and soothes himself back to sleep when he wakes in the middle of the night. And I watched him do this. He, he cuddles his dog, and he, he uh, pulls on Lewis's ear. And because of Lewis, Doreen and I are sleeping with a piece that's eluded us for years. He goes on to say, I find that when... Lewis and I have time together, along with the family, that I'm a better person to my wife and my sons. In my work, I've often seen families split up from the unimaginable stress of raising kids with special needs. I know Elliot is benefiting from having Lewis in a whole host of ways, but believe me when I say that when a dog can strengthen a family, help a husband love his wife, and both of them to love their children well, then that dog has done something most important in work there is. And that's what these dogs do. And I think Bob, with his story, tells us the same. So we, again, we thank you very much for inviting us here to share the story of Paws with the Cause. And we look forward to talking with you during the break. <laughs>